What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So what we're gonna do in today's video is take a look at the crypto market through the lens of Bitcoin. We're gonna ask the question, is this a real bull market that's formulating here or are we just looking at another bear market rally that we tend to see from time to time in the crypto market? So we're gonna do this through the lens of Bitcoin by looking at some different metrics which can tell us whether the market is showing healthy signs or whether this is just a fake out. So with that said guys, let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at this metric. This is the long-term holder spent output profit ratio for Bitcoin. So the price is in yellow and the SOPR is in pink. We're looking into the bull market as our market crashed, we came down in 2022, and then to wind up where we're at now in 2023. So I wanna show you how this metric tends to play out. So what this is telling you, essentially, is how much profit, on average, are long-term holders making on the asset. So it's looking at on-chain data to say, whenever the holder acquired the asset, when did they go ahead and sell it, right? So if you bought it at 100 and then you sold it at 200, your SOPR would be two, all right? So it's just a ratio of how much profit or loss you're taking. So in other words, if you bought it at 100 and then you sold it at 50, your SOPR would be 0.5, all right? So I wanna show you a very interesting thing that plays out in the crypto market. So obviously, as we go into our bull run, you'll notice the SOPR is going to peak and it peaks out here when we you know, hit that 64K level, right? That first top that we made. And then it just dropped off the map as the bear market really began to set in in 2022, all right? Now, here's the critical thing I wanna show you. So you'll notice that as the bear market continued on, we hit our bottom price here in November of 2022, right? When we got all the way down to the 15K region. That point, is when the SOPR bottomed out as well. You'll notice that it hit down to around 0.52 at that level, right? So, you know, we came all the way down and then just a couple weeks after it, we came down to around 0.52 on the SOPR, indicating that on average, even long-term holders were selling at a massive loss. Now, what's interesting is if we zoom out here, let's come to the prior cycle. Notice you see the exact same thing. We get this massive peak in the SOPR. It plummets, right? We plummet off the cliff right here as the bear market's really getting going. And where does it bottom out at? Notice it finishes at that same level. So if we just you know zoom and look at uh, you know the two market cycles, the SOPR hit around 0.52 in both cycles identically, right? The long-term holders selling their asset at a huge loss bottomed out at the exact same level. And even if we go back to the market cycle before, right when we hit our bottom price, that's where the SOPR bottoms out. And where did it bottom out at? At almost exactly the 0.52 level. So in every single major market cycle for Bitcoin so far, this metric has bottomed out right at wherever the market was kind of uh, hitting its low. And in each case, it came down to around 0.50 to 0.52. So it's pretty remarkable to demonstrate how, you know, accurate this metric, this one single metric has been for identifying where the true bottom for the market cycle is. And I think there's a lot of good reason for that. And that's simply because of the fact that as we've said many times, this is still a retail dominated market. And, you know, understanding where you're at in a market cycle is quite frankly, it's a it's an investigation of human psychology. And so you're seeing the same types of things play out over and over and over again. And we'll continue to show how, you know, that's not just true to this metric. You know, this holds across many different metrics in the crypto market. The most important takeaway point here is that you know, the behavior that we've demonstrated is exactly typical of what we expect in a normal bottoming of the market and then a slow recovery. All right. So the next thing I want to show you is this. So this is going to be the short term holder and long term holder realized price. And what that is, is showing you the price at which your average short term holder owns this asset. And that's going to be here in yellow. And then in orange, we have our long-term holder price. I wanted to show you each market cycle now and the behavior that it's demonstrated because yet again, you're starting to see this play out in a very particular way that's classic for a bear market 
a bottoming out of the market, and then a market recovery. Okay, so what we have here is back to 2015, that first market cycle. So in yellow, again, this is our short-term holder average price. So this is simply put the average price at which short-term holders own this asset. So in orange, we have the long-term holder average price. And you'll notice that the short-term holder average price actually gets lower than the long-term holder average price at the depths of the bear market. So we're back in 2015 here. And if I just zoom out, you'll get a better idea. You'll notice that we bottom out here. And at that point, the long-term holders actually own Bitcoin at a higher price than your short-term holders do. And think about what that means. You know, that means people who have been holding for a long period of time actually have a worse cost basis than day traders, okay? So these are the points when the market has essentially completely reset because you've shaken out everyone that you're going to shake out at these bottom levels, right? The long-term holders who are still holding the asset by and large are essentially demonstrating at this point that they're going to keep holding no matter what happens because you know they have long-term conviction in the asset. In yellow, this is your short-term holders. So these are going to be more day trader types or swing traders. And you'll notice that when you're in a bull market, this yellow line actually tends to be a support line for the asset. And you're not getting a very clear picture of that on the left side of the graph over here, but on the right side, you can see how the short-term holders actually, you know, as we're moving into a bull market, they become support. When you're in a bear market, they actually act more as resistance, right? Because it, as a short-term holder buys the asset and then it comes back to their price, especially if there's been a big drop-off in price, like we saw back here in 2014, once it gets back up to their price, those guys are going to sell because they're happy to just get out of the trade back at even. And so the short-term holder level becomes resistance. This is the classic pattern of the market bottoming though. 2018 now, the same thing. And I'll zoom out again to show you what we're talking about. So we peak out in 2017, the market starts to decline as we move into our bear market the yellow line becomes the resistance line. And so you'll notice every time we come back up to the short term holder cost basis in a bear market, there's a sell off, right? And what you notice here is yet again, after we bottom, so we made our lowest price at around 3,200, the long-term holder cost basis actually became higher than the short-term holder cost basis. So that means people, you know, who have been holding for an extended period of time on aggregate, they have a worse cost basis than your short-term holders, your day traders, your swing traders, right? Which is very atypical. That only happens at very critical junctures in the market. So that brings us to this cycle yet again. We fall into our bear market. You'll see this is the end of 2021 here where we peak at 69K. The yellow line becomes a resistance level. You'll notice we bounce right off of it here in March. Then we come down and yet again, you see this very classic typical behavior for the end of a bear market. We hit our price bottom. Shortly thereafter, the long-term holder cost basis becomes higher than the short-term holder cost basis. So that means you've essentially shaken out everyone that you're gonna get out of the market, right? All the long-term holders. So at this point, you actually see one other classic behavior. Okay, so this is the short-term holder divided by long-term holder ratio. So this is just saying, what percent of this market is comprised of short-term holders versus long-term holders? And if we look at this, you know, and going all the way back to the beginning here, Notice that at the end of, so we bottomed out here in 2015 and look what happens. Essentially, you, you don't have very many short-term holders left, right? About 76% of the market was made up of long-term holders. Same thing happens back here in uh, 2018. And now the same thing, in fact, to a new degree that we've never seen before. The long-term holders now make up around 82% of the market. There's only about 18% of this market is comprised of short-term holders. So this is exactly what you'd expect to see. And now I would like to also mention, this isn't necessarily an alarming fact here. Um, this is naturally going to happen over time. As you have more coins from the past, and especially as you get more lost coins, that type of thing, your long-term holders are naturally going to over time become progressively a higher ratio of the asset. You typically see that short-term holders increase in ratio as the bull market picks up. Whereas as you're exiting a bear market, you tend to see this metric start to bottom out, right? You saw the same thing back here in 2015. 
even as we started to recover, you know, short-term holders aren't necessarily convinced yet. And that ratio still continues to plummet. So we're at record lows right now where 82% of this market is primarily long-term holders. So that means your high conviction players are still continuing to hold the asset. You know, people that are long-term holders are seeing the price at 42, 43K and they're not going to be the kind of people that are going to start selling the asset just because, you know, we've seen a, you know, 100, 200% rally. These are the people that believe in the asset going to 100K, et cetera. So we're just building a narrative here. We're showing you that essentially a lot of the things that we've seen play out in prior market cycles, you know, it's all happening exactly as we would expect. It's all happening like it's happened, you know, in a very similar manner in the past. Okay, so this is our website, polaritydigital.io, and we offer a host of various risk metrics for Bitcoin and most of the top altcoins. Now, this is going to be one of our primary risk metrics called the UDPI long. <clears throat> and so this metric is essentially showing you where are the market peaks and market bottoms occurring, right? And so the scale for this metric is five, and that would suggest a market peak or minus five for a market bottom. So I have this color coded here and we'll just look at it like this. And what I want to show you is as this metric begins to heat up, in other words, the market is reaching a top, you'll notice that it reaches into these red colors here. Now, as the market cools off and hits a bottom, that is going to be indicated by these darker blue colors. And you'll notice that in each market cycle top, right back here in 2018 and back here in uh, 2021, the market, when it kind of reached its peak, we saw that the, the metric essentially was telling you to get out of the market. You know, this is the top, we've hit our top, you need to get out now. Now, interestingly, as the bear market progressed, this metric showed blue, which indicates typically the best times to purchase the asset at a few critical points. One of them was right at the bottom here in 2018, Another was at this local bottom that we hit in 2022 when our price was at around 19K. And another was when we hit our true bottom over here in December of 2022. Okay, so we bottomed out here in the dark blue color indicating it's a great time to buy. But then shortly thereafter, we got into this orange color. So that's going to be around a one or two on the risk metric. And remember this goes from five to minus five. So a one or two indicates relative um, you know, the market is probably a bit overheated, especially just bouncing off of a bottom. Now in this market cycle, notice we've done something very similar. We bottomed here, right? We bottomed in December. We had this blue, this dark blue color indicating that you should get into the market right now. And now look at where we're at. So I'll just zoom in to show you. And notice that we're reaching into these orange colors right now. And I'll just bring the metric back to show you exactly where we're at. So we are at around a, you know, a 0.7 or so. So the 0.7 is indicating to you that, you know, remember zero is that neutral level. Minus five is going to be your best times to be buying the asset. And then a five is an absolute market peak, right? Absolute mania phase. So we are doing something very similar to what we saw back here in 2019. We are now reaching into these orange colors. And so I'm showing you this to demonstrate that like we saw with all the on-chain metrics, like we saw with the SOPR, like we saw with the short-term holder to long-term holder ratio, right? The realized price. You know, the market is playing out in a manner exactly like we've seen in the past, okay? So what this is indicating to us is that, you know, the market looks very healthy right now. All of the different metrics that we're seeing play out are, you know, they're they're unfolding exactly like we would expect in a typical bull market beginning. Now, what this means though, look what happened back here in 2019. Even though the market had started to recover, it was too soon. You know, we just, we heated up way too quick. The market wasn't ready. You know, we needed another shakeout period. And so that could very well happen now. So people questioning whether is this a true bull market that we're starting to see or is it a, you know, is this just another bear market fake out? I do tend to believe that we're seeing that this is a true bull market beginning that's playing out. But critically, for people that are FOMOing in right now, you know, we tend to see that these markets 
don't just go up. You know, th there is going to very likely be a large correction. So let's go back to, let's go back here to uh, 2015. That 2015 recovery was very slow. You know, it wasn't like the 2019 recovery where there was a massive price gain followed by a massive correction. But even in this, this uh, 2015 recovery, notice what happened. There were actually, let's see. So we had one, two, three, four, five. Just by the beginning or the middle of uh, 2017, starting at the recovery, we had five separate corrections of around 40%. Now let's go back to this 2019 recovery. And even here, if you look, we had one. And then if you want to count this one, another would be two. And then if you want to count this, cor this correction that we had right here, three. Four, so a total of four corrections of around 40 to 50%. And then if you wanna go from top in 2019 down to the COVID crash, a 70% correction. But this was all part of a larger market cycle recovery, right? Where we were all the way down to 3,200. In spite of having this rally, you know, that we saw where we went from 3,200 all the way up to around 13K, a 330% increase, we had numerous massive market corrections. And so, you know, people that are thinking that just because, you know, if the price were to go down to 30K over the next uh, two days, let's say, that would not indicate that this is not a bull market, right? Not necessarily anyway. I expect that we will have multiple corrections, huge corrections. And why are those going to happen? They're going to happen in order to shake out the people that are FOMOing into the market right now. So if you've watched my channel, what have we been saying since back here, since December? I've been saying that, guys, this market, a lot of the things that are happening right now are suggestive of the fact that we are in a bear market. So 2022, I was extremely bearish all year, getting flack left, right, and center from people telling me that, you know, no, we're going to, you know, this is just a correction as we're going to go into a new all-time high. And based on all the metrics that we were seeing, I wasn't buying it. Then at the beginning of 2023, I started to show you metrics that were suggesting, hey, look at this realized price. Look at what's happened with the long-term holders. Look at what's happened with the short-term holder to long-term holder ratio. Look at how these are playing out exactly like we would expect them to. And I've been telling you this entire time, you know, we offer these risk metrics saying that do dynamically dollar cost averaging into this market is a hugely profitable strategy if you're going from a bear market into a bull market. And so anyone who's been doing that is absolutely killing it right now. And I've showed, you know, a back test on the public channel and I just did an extensive back test on the Polarity Digital channel where I showed that you know, even back uh, when we were down here in the 30Ks, you were up 100% or so just on Bitcoin, even if you started dollar cost averaging at the beginning of the bear market, even if you were buying Bitcoin at 56K, if you were dynamically dollar cost averaging with the risk models, you were up around 100%. Now that we're up at 44K, I haven't done another back test, but you know, just based on looking at my account, you know, it's probably something like 150% or so that you are up right now if you've been dynamically dollar cost averaging. And I made video after video after video in 2022 saying over and over again, guys, I don't know if we're at the bottom right now when we hit, you know, 29K. I don't know if we're at the bottom. I don't think we are, but I'm still dollar cost averaging right now because in the long term, I believe that this is going to be you know, just a, a bump in the road, even if we do go down from here. When we were down at 20K, I said, I don't know if we're at the bottom. I don't think we are, but I'm going to keep dollar cost averaging, et cetera. And I kept saying that even as we were down at 15K, I'm still dollar cost averaging. So I'm using my dynamic dollar cost average risk strategy in order to enter this market. So when we're up here, I told you, hey, I'm not buying very much right now, but I am buying. I'm not buying very much right now, but I am buying when we're at 30K. When we're down here at 19K, now I'm buying a lot. I don't know if we're at the bottom. I don't think we are, but I'm buying a lot. Same thing at 15K, you know, 16K. I'm buying a lot because I'm using the risk metrics in order to help me understand where the market overall may be with relation to the actual 
suspected bottom based on everything, you know, the machine learning algorithm models that we're using. Okay. So now that we're working our way up, I was continuing to dollar cost average all the way up here to around 30K. But as we go up higher and higher, much less so because the metrics using the risk metrics is helping you get into the asset. Right. And so now that we're up here at 44K, I've been acquiring Bitcoin for a full on, you know, uh, essentially two years at this point. Right. All through 2022 and then all through 2023. And then if you're using the risk metrics, you're doing it dynamically such that you're buying more when you're down at these lowest levels. So buying the most Bitcoin by far down here at 16K, down at 20K. And now we're at 44K just absolutely killing it throughout this market cycle. All by using these very basic metrics, which just show you simple human psychology. So with all that said, I wanna show you this one last thing. And this really just drives home the point that all of the metrics that we're seeing are showing us that we are looking at a expected recovery in the crypto market. And everything is playing out like it has in the past. And I expect that, you know, you never know what's going to happen in your local area. Um, we could see another big correction and you, it's difficult to know exactly when those are coming, right? But we're looking at the big picture here. I don't care about, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff. I don't care about a 30% correction or a 30% gain. That's very small picture type stuff. And, you know, I'm not investing in the crypto market with all the risks that are associated with it in order to gain 30, 40, 50%, even a hundred percent. I'm looking at long-term picture you know, multi-year strategy where if you're, you know, if you're sticking to your strategy, if you're looking at the metrics, it, your, your gains that you're going to make are going to be absolutely massive. So when we're looking at these things, these aren't like day to day, you know, if you're expecting this to be a day trading channel, that's not what this is. Very likely you won't find much here for that. So everything that we're seeing has happened in the past. And we're looking at what in, in my opinion is a healthy, slow market recovery. So here we have the Bitcoin active addresses in, and we're looking from 2018 as we go into this bear market and then our recovery. 2018 all the way through about 2020, the beginning of 2020. So we have active addresses, hash rate and transactions. So notice as we peak here, right? As we peak, look at our active addresses. They crash as we're moving into our bear market. Then we hit this bottom and they slowly start to recover, right? We recover into 2019. Hash rate continually rises over time as your miners continue to believe in the asset long term. And our transactions, the same thing. We peak, but then look what happens, guys. We have a big drop off, right? Active addresses drop, transactions drop. And as we go into our bull run, they start to recover. Now, if we come into this cycle, you're seeing the exact same thing. Look at our active addresses. We dropped off the cliff here in 2021. Right. And even with this smaller recovery that we had, the active addresses didn't even get close to where it was in the past. But look what it's done since the end of 2021 into 2022. We bottomed. So did our active addresses. And now it's slowly recovering, a healthy recovery. Hash rate reaching to new all time highs constantly. Transactions reaching into new all time high levels. So all of this is showing you that all of the market metrics all of the human sentiment metrics, all of the investor psychology metrics, even the machine learning algorithm model risk metrics, you know, are all suggesting to you that the market is playing out in a very healthy manner. So ultimately, what I believe is that we are in the beginnings of a bull market recovery. In fact, we've been in one ever since, you know, I started making videos on this topic in the beginning of 2023 saying, it really looks like the market's starting to recover now, but it's probably gonna take a significant amount of time. Now, here we are almost a year later, and we're seeing the play out, we're seeing the market play out exactly as I would expect. Now, with all of that said, remember, we had a big, huge correction back here, 77 or you know, 71%. We had numerous corrections back here in 2015. Um, you know, so just because we are, everything looks great right now. Everything looks great this week. Doesn't mean that, you know, we don't go up to 50K and then get bounced all the way back down to 30K or even lower than that. That could very likely happen. You know, this crash went a lot lower than a lot of people expected. So this isn't financial advice, but my belief is that 
this market still has a ways to go. We're not going to go racing to new all-time highs. Now, if we do, great. You know, uh, that's that's fine with me. I'll just continue with my strategy as I've mentioned in this video. So ultimately what I'm telling you is, you know, I believe that the market is showing the makings of an expected recovery now. All of the network metrics look healthy. All of the investor sentiment metrics look healthy. Investor psychology has played out exactly like we've seen in the past. So nothing really that unique is happening here. Now, with all that said, we could very well see a massive correction like we've seen in the past. In fact, I expect to see that. So, you know, that's going to shake out a lot of the people with low conviction, a lot of the people who are, you know, passive observers. They're just coming in, trying to make a quick buck. It will shake them out. And something like that could even go on for an extended period of time. Additionally, you know, we have economic risks. If those come to fruition, you know, if the, the recession that people have been talking about actually plays out, yeah, the market may get stopped in its tracks because remember, a top-down approach. The economy is controlling the crypto market more than the crypto market is controlling the economy, right? So if, uh, you know, if some severe regulatory actions came out or if the economy began to tank, you could see the the recovery get stopped in its tracks. And then what we would do is look to the metrics to determine, hey, is this an unhealthy sign or is this still just part of the expected bull market recovery? So my stance is we are good to go right now. Everything looks good. I'm expecting a big correction at some point, but I'm not going to be frightened by it. I'm definitely not going to panic sell because a, you know, a big market correction comes. I'm expecting that, especially with this massive rally that we've seen going from, you know, down here at 25 K all the way up to nearly uh, 43 K at the moment. So with that said, guys, that's going to be it for this one until next time, as usual, see you.